Hey, welcome or oh, welcome back to 4F Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? Don't know. What well, I don't know. This is a slightly different video for me today. Uh, it is a demo on how to do this eye look. Stunning, isn't it? Isn't it stunning? About what we're concentrating on today are the tools that I've used. Now, one set of these cost eight pounds a brush, and one set of these cost two pounds a brush. So the question is, which set performs best out of Jeffree Star X Morphe and Royal and Langnickel, who are a very well established brush company used and recommended by an awful lot of professional makeup artists. So, if you want to find out exactly what I think of these brushes and which ones I feel are more worth you spending your money on, and then my friend, you are in exactly the right place. Welcome back. To my channel and here comes the brush battle hey welcome back from the intro um it's really overcast and it's raining so if my lighting goes up and down i am sorry i have got my led strip light on which i hope will help um i would have shown you all of these in the intro but they're probably going to be used when I show them to you because I film the intro right at the end. I know, who knew YouTube work that way? Um, this is a challenge, you know this if you've, if you've read the description. This is a challenge between the Morphe, Jeffrey Hill. Jeffrey Hill? Ooh, now is that not a Freudian slip? The Morphe Jeffrey Star brushes and Royal and Langnickel. Now, when Jeffrey's brushes were first announced, Kevin James Bennett, who is a well-renowned makeup artist, said, I don't know why you're bothering with those when Royal and Langnickel are renowned brush makers and it's even cheaper than Morphe. And I thought, mm, yeah, okay, okay all right, James. Um, and I commented, yeah, that'd be great for us people in the UK if we could get them. And he then instantly provided me with a site and a link. And I'm like, oh. Okay, I'll uh, up shut the f then and uh, go and have a look. And I was astounded because these three brushes that I had picked up, which were delivered in boxes like this, like this, in padded envelopes, so minimal packaging, these two all together cost the same as one of the Jeffrey brushes. So I only bought two of Jeffrey brushes. I bought two of the eye brushes because <clears throat> I wasn't really fussed with the rest of them to be honest. I was going to get the highlighter brush as well but that had sold out like literally a minute after it launched. So I got the Royal Langnickel one instead but these eye brushes £2 each. Highlighter brush £4. So all of these brushes eight quid. This is the box that my Jeffree Star brushes arrived in. You ask yourself, how big are these damn brushes? How, how much packaging have they got around them? Well, I got through all the bubble wrap, as you do. And uh, at the bottom, in Plastic sleeves are the Jeffrey brushes. So the question is, 
do these two pound raw lanyard brushes perform better than the eight pounds Jeffree Star brushes. Now I'm leaning like this because I'm hoping that when I do my thumbnail I can actually take a screenshot of this and get a picture of me fully made up with the unused brushes this side because obviously in the intro they're going to be used. Okay so but I mean on price Royal and Lang Nickel 1 nil because all three of these brushes for the same price as one of these. In terms of packaging, well that makes it two nil because they're packed securely in a box to properly protect the bristles because this won't protect the bristles and they were sent in a padded envelope, not a ruddy great box. So packaging, that makes it 2 nil. So, let's see what the quality is like, shall we? So, I've also got this kind of plastic thing on that you get when you buy AliExpress brushes. <laughs> um, now, I believe these ones are both natural hair. But they're actually quite soft. I've used some natural hair brushes in the past, which are quite rough. But these do feel quite soft. Um, they're very light in the hand. They feel cheap, to be honest. Um, I mean, I've got some brushes here that I bought from AliExpress. And one of these weighs the same as these two together and this is a really nice sort of champagne brushed metal it's equally as soft and I got a set of 12 for £2.60 I think there was 12 anyway um, if I remember I'll put the link to them in the description but yeah so these these two admittedly very very pretty design but I've seen stuff like this on Aliexpress and wish for significantly less than eight pound a brush um, the top of the ferrule here has got Morphe X Jeffree Star JS5 on this one and JS6 on this one. So let's open the raw Langnickel ones. Do you see what I mean? It's just... It feels so much... These look and feel like they're £8 makeup brushes. The other ones look like they should be the two pound makeup brushes to be quite honest. So I've got two of these. Uh, again, as you can see, the same shape as the Jeffrey ones to make it fair. Uh, this one is not is called their eyeshadow brush, which is the same as the JS6, and this is the crease brush, which is the same as the JS5. These also are very soft, but these these were 100% vegan. These are not. Now people have asked why Jeffrey released brushes through Morphe instead of through his own company. He is very proud of the fact that his company is 
cruelty free and in most cases in fact, I think all cases now vegan I don't care what you say animal hair brushes mm, I don't class those as cruelty free certainly not vegan because they're a byproduct of an animal so if you're a vegan then the Royal Langnickel ones win. So that, that's kind of 3 nil before I even start using them. Okay. Right. I'll open this highlighter brush as well because I want to use this today. See what it's like. This is the Chic Pro range from... Um, Royal Langnickel, but they have actually got in their Moda range. She said, trying to get this damn thing back in. And it doesn't want to go. These are Chic Pro, but they have got in their Moda range pink brushes. So if you really want to, oh, this is so soft. Oh, and this is going to be perfect for highlight as well. Look at that. Oh, that is so soft. That that genuinely feels like stroking a rabbit or a cat. But it's synthetic, it's vegan. Alright. So, I have washed, moisturised, SPF'd and primed my face. And on my eyelids I have put um, concealer, which I have set with Coty Airspun. My eyes are a little bit runny today so let's hope that doesn't affect this too much. I'm going to go in with my Paulina palette because I've only done, got one look of that up online which is using the greens and I want to get into using some of those purples and pinks. So let's have a zoom in and see which of these brushes actually perform best. Good. Right, so I'm going to use Jeffrey on one side and I'm going to use Royal Langnickel on the other. So I'm going to start off with the JS5. Not the easiest to read, to be fair. See, it's okay there because I've managed to get some shade on it, but it's like this. It's not the easiest of things to kind of, but yeah, that's the JS5, which is the fluffy crease brush. So I'm going to go into <clears throat> Angel, which is the pink, and I'm going to start off by laying that colour down through my crease. like so. This is a little bit different to my normal tutorials because this is a brush off rather than a tutorial. And then pick up a little bit more and do my usual windscreen wipers to bring the colour up the eye. Oh my eyes are really streaming again today. This is all I need, because I really want to get this review up while brushes are relatively new. I mean, they're sold out at the moment, but and they're meant to be limited edition, but we all know what Morphe's limited editions are like. Jacqueline Hill was meant to be a limited edition. Hmm. Okay, that blob there is actually where the shadows got wet because my eye was streaming. So and this is picking the colour up well. And it is it is nice and soft, I will give it that. In terms of 
because I'm having a very bad fibro day. That's another reason why I wanted to do it today. Because with with um, when my fibro is this bad, my skin is super super sensitive. So I'll be even be like Princess and the Pea. I'll definitely be able to tell even the minutest difference in how the brush feels. But so far, that's that's not bad. Right. Let's pick up, and obviously it's it's. That's the other problem with this. This is going to stain these brushes, whereas at least with the Royal Land Nickel being darker on the top, it's going to be easier to get any staining out. So let's pick up the Royal and Land Nickel crease brush. Okay. Go into the same shade, Angel. Pick the colour up. Pop it through the crease. Again, super soft. Really soft. And pick up some more pigment. And blend it up the eye. I mean, there is genuinely at the moment no discernible difference from the two. Um, in terms of how they feel against my skin and how they're performing at the moment, it doesn't appear to be a huge amount of difference. Although, to be fair, that does seem to have blended that pink out a bit easier. Um, The Jeffrey side, although synthetic brushes against real animal hair brushes, is, there's always going to be a slight difference there. Although, as I understood it, animal hair was meant to work better with powders. Right, that's the two colours pretty much even. I'm just going to clean these both off on my face cloth to get some of that pigment out because I'm going to change colour but I'm going to use the same brush. Yeah, look, as you can see the Jeffrey one is already stained. That's the Royal Lang Nickel. Mm, it looks like it's stained but it's not so obvious is it? Right, I'm going to go into... I'm going to go into Paulina which is a deeper pink. I'm really going to screw this brush up now. And again, I'm going to initially go through my crease with it. Pick up some more pigment and just deepen that up without taking it too high up the eye. If you want an actual explanation of why I do the eye, um, the kind of manoeuvres that I do with the brush, then just check any of my other tutorials and I do go through it in a lot more detail. But this isn't really a tutorial on the palette, this is testing the brushes out. Now I always struggle here and here to get pigment to lay down. simply because of creasing and that's where I get stress eczema or one of the places that I get stress eczema so that's deepened that side up right, going with the Royal and Lang Nickel Onto the other side, same thing. Lay the crease colour down. Go back in, pick up some more pigment. And let 
let's deepen that up. Okay, straight away this this to me looks like it's blending the deeper pink much more evenly. I feel like I had to work a lot harder this side than I am this side to get the same effect and I'm getting now this eye I normally get the most fallout on because this eye the skin is looser because it got pulled around when I was a kid by the ophthalmic but you can see I'm actually getting more fallout on this side um, just tapping the extra pigment into the area that I struggle with And you can see, I think, that, now bearing in mind I'm using exactly the same palette, and yet this side looks much more smooth in terms of blending than this side does. That's interesting. Because on the eye, they don't feel that different. You can see me getting some more of these water and Langnickel brushes, especially at that price. I know what you're saying. Why do you need so many brushes? Well, because when my fibro is bad and I'm in a lot of high pain, I can't sit there and continually swirl the brush to clean it. Um, so I need to have a lot of brushes so that I can just if necessary pick up a clean set. Let's dust some of this fall out away. You can see there was significantly less fallout on this side. And I've done exactly you've seen I've done exactly the same with both sides. And yet to me this side looks much smoother than this one does. That's really interesting. Hmm. Right, I'm going to go into Aubergine, which is a lo lovely deep purple. I think you can see. I'm going to pat that initially in this outer corner. Just to add some depth there. And pick up some more of that pigment. And just run it gently through the crease, like so. And I'm just going to blend along that crease without adding any more pigment to it and without taking it up the eye. I just want to soften the edges of that line. Hmm. And just gently buff that corner. Now purples are the most difficult shade to make and to blend because obviously the more pigment you have in a or the more the deeper a colour, obviously the more pigment molecules there are to blend. And also purple Blue and green are pretty much the most difficult colours to do. Now I'm just going to buff that corner a little bit. Okay. And then going in with the Royal and Langnickel, I'm going to do exactly the same on the other side. Crease. 
and then give it a blend. Now because I have those deep creases I do have to really gently pull my lid out like this to do this bit here. Pick up a fraction more and just deepen up that outer corner. As I said, you're going to have to ignore that pink line just there because that is where my eye ran. Let me just see if I can get rid of that. But I'm going to go back in again on the Jeffrey side and just see if I can smooth this pigment out at all. It's just... Looking at the two, you would think I had used different palettes on both eyes. Because this has blended so much nicer than this one. And yet you've seen I have used exactly the same manoeuvres, exactly the same palette just different brushes. That is interesting. Right, clean those brushes off as best I can. Now I am picking up the JS6 and the eyeshadow. Now these are what I would refer to as packing brushes. You can use them for blending, but to me this is for dealing with shimmers and packing colour on. So, I'm going to go into Thingaling first. with the Jeffrey brush and you know I apply my pigments wet so we'll just wet that pigment I'm just going to get my small mirror out so I can see what I'm doing and I'm just going to pop this on the eyelid really pretty. And then I'm going to clean it off because I never go into a pigment with a wet brush. And I'm going to go into Salma and I'm going to wet this one. I always wipe the ferrule dry so that you don't get anything, any moisture going down to loosen the bristles. And I'm just going to pop Selma just on the outer part there and just gently and then use the side that hasn't got any pigment on just to blend it in. the mat in the corner and then very gently just sort of blend those two shimmers together in the middle. You can use your finger but I don't want to poke my eye out. Hmm. Pretty 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 as uh, Nicky Raven would say. <clears throat> Now 
One thing I have noticed with these, when I'm cleaning them off, they're going very fluffy, but there are no animal hair brushes do that. So, right, now picking up the Royal and Lang Nickel, the eyeshadow brush. And again, I'm going to go into Thingaling. wet the pigment now with this one because of my deep creasing I do have to stretch my eye out otherwise it kind of sits above the crease and as it dries I get full out through the day okay this this feels a lot softer when I'm applying a wet pigment than the other one does. But again, that could be because this is synthetic and the other one is animal hair. So let's go in and pick up some Salma. Wet that one and just pop that onto the outer edge just like we did before, and then using the back of the brush just to blend this into the matte shade and also into fingerling. That's so pretty. <clears throat> I do love, love, love this palette. So thank you for doing such a pretty palette, Paulina. Okay, I am going to disappear off camera and do foundation and whatnot, and I will be back to do the under eyes. So, but this continues. Go nowhere, please. Hey, right, I'm back again. And I am going to go in with the JS6. And I'm going to go into Sige. And just really gently buff that green under my bottom lash line like so normally I do this with more of a pencil style brush or a flat topped brush but to prove that we can do it just with the two brushes and then going in with the Royal Langnickel into Sigge same this side and flinching because obviously I have no peripheral vision being blind in this eye okay I feel like I can get closer to my lashes with this brush if you look the Jeffrey one seems to have come a lot lot further down my eye Actually quite a big difference there but I think as I said I think that's because this is really splaying out see that's the flat side can you see, see the difference in thickness now when originally these were these were they started off the same kind of thickness I'm just gonna see if I can flatten those brushes down a little bit just to yeah, you see, as soon as you try and squidge the sides in, they just come flipping straight back out again. This is the issue with natural hair brushes. <clears throat> right, I'm going to go into Friends, which is this gorgeous lime green. And just soften that line, which this side, to be fair, is already pretty bland, bloody soft. And 
And then I'm going to do the same with the Roland Nickel on the other eye. And you can see you have a lot more control with this one. It doesn't go down anywhere near as much as with the Jeffrey brush. I much prefer this to me is worked too far down. I'm going to have to tackle that with some concealer, I think. To try and even it up. <laughs> Do you see that? I nearly went in with this brush this side. Yeah, nice one, Angel. Right. Uh, I'm going to pop some mascara on and I'm going to go for the bad gal. Bang. I just, I love the brush on this. I think when this mascara is done with, I think I might keep the brush and just rinse it out and use it with other mascaras because I really like, um, can you tell I'm trying not to poke myself in the eye while I'm talking to you, I really like how this makes my lashes look. Can you hear that rain? Yeah, it's definitely coming down out there. If you're wondering why I do the back side of the lashes as well, it's because that normally gets pigment on them when you're blending. To me, it just neatens the look up a lot, you know? And then pop a little bit onto the bottom lashes. And now I'm going to go in with some corner of shiller. Now, around my eye, I use a brush like this. And I'm just going to pop a little bit just from sort of the bridge of my brow. So if you've got an arch, you put this on from the arch. I have very straight brows, so I kind of, I fake an arch by plucking them, basically. So just putting it on the tail end of my brow, just to lift the look. Wow, it is properly coming down out there now. some on the inner corner and just carry it down to meet the green underneath there and just blend the two together a bit and then clean it off on my little washcloth over here and then do the same this side pop it on the inner corner bring it down I'm going to zoom you out briefly Yoink. <clears throat> because I want to use this one. This is the Royal Langnickel Highlighter Brush. And I'm just going to see how well this highlights. Uh, well, um, okay. Oh. soft against my skin. This is so nice. Ooh, Kevin James Bennett, if I wasn't already a married woman, I think I'd propose. Because these Royal Land Nickel brushes are amazing. I can see now why he um, talks about them so much. And price-wise, they were awesome. I mean, these were their cheapest brushes. So goodness only knows what quality their more expensive brushes are going to be like. And even their more expensive ones were not that bad. Price-wise, you know. Oh, I like that. Right. I'm going to pause you, pop some lippy on, do my hair, and then we come back for final thoughts on... 
The Battle of the Brushes. I don't know why I said it like that. Mm. Hey, right, I'm back. So let's have a really quick zoom in. Now, I want you to look at each eye individually. And then side by side. Now, which eye do you think looks best? Comments in the description box below. So, having used these brushes, what do I think? Um, they're both very, very soft. Very soft. Which surprised me for animal hair brushes for Jeffrey's ones. Um, I've not had animal hair brushes that are that soft before. So they have been um, very well manufactured. But they feel cheap. They sound like a cheap pair of chopsticks. Whereas these sound like they have more and they do have more weight to them. The Royal Langnicker ones are one of the two of the Jeffrey ones weighs the same as one of the Royal Langnickel. And coincidentally, three of the Royal Langnickel is the same price as one of the Jeffreys. Um, personally, although looking at the eyes, particularly from, from back here, you can't really see that much of a distance. Difference? Distance. Difference. Can't speak today. Although you can't really see much of a difference from back here, in terms of how easy it was to blend shadows out, how often I had to re-dip into the palette, um, I prefer the Royal Langnickel, which anybody who knows me knows how much I've always been a stan of Jeffrey, although admittedly just lately he's getting more and more difficult to support. Um, but I've always been a stan of his makeup because it's always been super high quality. Um, I do feel like he's produced these with more fit. I mean, they were originally meant to be released back in what, 2016? Um, but his company was properly taking off then and I do feel this was just a I'm under contract, I want to release some brushes with my company but I can't until I fulfil my contractual obligations to Morphe. That that does feel what these are like because the original brush set was meant to be ten brushes, he only released seven. Um, I... If you'd given them to me, without any branding on them, looking at the colour, I might have guessed Jeffrey. But knowing what he's like about quality, as soon as I picked them up, I would never have said Jeffrey. They feel cheap and tacky, to be quite honest. Um, they photograph very well. But in person they do feel, and to be honest, look a little bit cheap and tacky. Whereas the Royal Langnickel, if you're a professional makeup artist going out to do a client, you could quite easily pull these out of your bag and not lose any respect. So it looks like it's a queen, queen, clean sweep for the Royal Langnickels. What do you think? Let me know in the description box below which ones you think performed best. Right, 
that's it from me. I now need to go and edit this so I can try and get it up online before the weekend, or at least on Saturday morning. I hope you enjoyed this and found it informative and helpful. If you did, it would be awesome if you could hit that like button, comment, share, subscribe. When you subscribe, don't forget to ring my bell. Ring my bell and choose all notifications. That's so that you get told every time that I upload another one of these films. And, talking of another one of these films, I've got an awful lot to choose from and YouTube are awful at sending out notifications. So why don't you pop over and have a look and see if there's any that you've missed. Or, as I said, if you want a more in-depth discussion on how you can follow my tutorial if you have hooded eyes, or why I use the particular blending techniques that I use on my eyes, any of my, particularly my more recent uh, tutorials, will go into that for you. Once you've watched all of mine, it would be awesome if you could check out my girlies from the Beauty YouTuber Growth Group, who were kind enough to let me join. Um, they also have fantastic content and you would be a fool if you don't pick up at least one of their films. Right, all that remains for me to say is your stay fabulous and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.